resilience is is certainly a real buzzword at the moment. Um, the whole mental health space is full of buzzwords and thing, things come in and out of fashion. But particularly at the moment, when you look at where we are in this pandemic, it is it is hugely used. And in my opinion, it's kind of an overused buzzword. Um, so my talk is entitled, Is Resilience Always the Answer? And that's the sort of thing that I'm going to unpack over the next you know, 15, 16 minutes. Um, if we just start with what resilience means from a dictionary definition, OK, it's defined as um, the ability to be able to recover easily and quickly from unpleasant or damaging events. OK, now, in theory and in and 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 in day to day life, I think that's fantastic. OK. But what we're seeing is a different, a different approach to things. And I think resilience is a word that is used so much, and I believe wrongly. So I'm going to kind of explore, explore that. When you look at the pandemic overall, um, and you start to understand, actually, when people are talking resilience, this is a hugely challenging thing for people. You've got isolation, you've got loneliness, um, you've got the whole thing of self resilience. So Resilience and in general is something that works really, really well where you have a group of like minded people around you and you have family and friends with you. You can bounce ideas off and they can help you and they can build you up. At the moment, there's a lot of people who are isolated, stuck at home, working there 24 hours a day all the time. And actually, they're having to be completely reliant on themselves to do that. So I want to explore a few different a few different angles. Um, I believe there's different sorts. So there's inside and outside. Now, inside resilience is what is in inside your body. OK, and I believe that that is true resilience. The stuff that's outside is more akin to having a hard shell or a tough skin. And I'll talk I'll talk about that in detail. Um, so these are two very different things. There is also, I think, learned resilience and needed for resilience so the learned stuff is the stuff that you'll learn as you as you grow up from parents teachers friends and life in general needed for is a scenario where for example you have a boss who's shouting at you all right or you have a teacher or a lecturer at university who's shouting at you or angry and you have to put up a defense you have to put up some sort of barrier and that's what i mean when i talk about this kind of hard shell now, what's very interesting is when you start to unpack resilience, what is really intriguing here is that resilience and self-esteem are inextricably linked. OK, they are one of the same thing. And without without self-esteem, resilience is a really, really tricky thing to to kind of pull together. So I think, you know, it's a much needed skill in day to day life. Absolutely. But in my mind, it's more about being able to handle life's knocks, the sort of things that happen on a day to day basis, ha um, le learning to handle them and learning how to move on quickly. Yeah, I think that is absolutely key. Um, you can't be taking things to heart that shouldn't be, but things that should be, you should be and you should act, act upon them. So really, I think it's the kind of difference between robustness is a good word for it, I think. Um, and being thick skinned. So I'm going to create a new word today, bounce back ability. <laughs> which actually, it is a word I discovered yesterday, which was quite interesting. So I think I think that's one of the interesting areas. It's about within the day to day um, stuff that happens in life, being able to bounce back, learn from it and move on. So in my opinion, resilience is something that should really be started to be built as a child. Um, I think part of the problem we see in the world today, and I see this in my work, certainly with um, organisations in business, is this whole thing around, you know, people aren't tough enough anymore. They're not resilient, snowflakes and all these horrible terms they use. Um, but you know what? That's not people's fault. Um, that's not the individual's fault. What you very often find is if you're continually told by your parents and at school and at university, for example, you know, the world is your oyster. If you work hard, you know, if you work really, really hard, the world is your oyster. You can do whatever you want. You know what? And the problem with that is that it's unfair <laughs> and it's untrue. Um, and it leads people into a path where, unfortunately, there is probably one answer, which is going to be disappointment. So I think there is... Um, 
a huge role here for parents, teachers, lecturers, friends, partners, colleagues, bosses, etc., etc., to be helpful and to be kind and compassionate and allow people to build up a sensible level of resilience. Now, I think there is an interesting area here. I think, um, I think, in schools, and I've got three kids. Um, I've got one who's. 30 and one who's uh, nearly 14 and one who's 12. So my two younger kids who are at secondary school now, you know, they spend all their time learning about history and that's brilliant. They learn all about different wars and civilizations and, you know, politics and things like that. And they learn lots and lots of things about, um, you know, geographical things and what that cloud's called and all the rest of it, which is great. But where is the learning in school today of things like your mental well-being, your physical well-being, nutrition, cooking, budgeting, planning, making decisions. There's not enough of that, in my opinion, um, that that kind of that kind of goes there. So what I think we're moving to is actually really resilience is not about the tough shell. It comes from within and it's everyone's responsibility to start to grow that. So I want to talk about a bit about me. Um, a bit about my story. So I spent 28 years in the advertising world, which is a fairly, fairly tough, tough, old, brutal world. And one of the constant themes that I always felt during that was that I didn't have as much self-belief as I should have done. Now, the fact I stayed in the business for 28 years and I ended up a board director of a very, very big agency would suggest I was actually quite good at my job, but it didn't actually matter to me because I didn't feel I was. And I constantly suffered from the imposter syndrome, this kind of fear of being found out. And that was really, really difficult to deal with. And whenever I was challenged by people, particularly people who I felt were, you know, smarter than me or better than me, I would feel myself crumble. I'll go very, very quiet. And any resilience that I had would simply get up and walk out the door, which, which you know, was a challenge in a very, very kind of quite aggressive, confrontational and you know, on the on in on occasions, quite an arrogant, conceited type of business where the biggest voice often wins. So the bulk of my time in the advertising world um, was on this bit of a seesaw. So when things were great, they were brilliant. But the moment there was a blip, all of that self doubt would come rushing back. Um, you know, which is a challenge, <laughs> to be honest with you. And I guess with this sort of backdrop, um, the truth would be really that earlier experiences in work and school molded that sort of behavior in me you know um you know the shouting aggressive boss for example you know patronizing teachers which we've all probably had from time to time belittling colleagues who you know see a piece of your work and criticize it and that coupled with me generally not feeling brilliant about myself at the time anyway almost led me into this re um, resilience swamp or quicksand if you like um <clears throat> So this got me thinking, should it really be up to the individual, i.e. me and you and whoever else, to be more resilient or should people be less aggressive and more human, you know, particularly in authority? So resilience stops becoming this thing that particularly in 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 the kind of workplace, people are obsessed with it. You read any decent job description of a reasonably senior job, and it's all about you want to be resilient and tough and handle knocks and do all of this. And it's and that's great. But is it really the most important thing to actually look for? So that's what I want to kind of explore. Um, so resilience, is it always a good thing? Surprisingly, I don't think so. <laughs> um, if you have a look at um, some classic quotes that are very much centered around um, around the resilient space. Things like what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's true. If you stop and think about that for a minute, that's quite a punchy saying, isn't it? <laughs> um, things like, for example, I'll show you this. So I've got this running medal here. OK, so that talks about pain is simply uh, what is it? Pain is simply weakness leaving the body. Now, that is a quote that is on this marathon medal of mine here, but is also something that the US Marine Corps use. Now, it's all very macho. When I got this put around my neck after running a very, very hard marathon, I felt incredibly proud and brilliant. And actually, I loved I loved 
that that statement it made me feel really really cool and re and and really proud but you know that's just having run a marathon you know that's in an extreme case so when you look at things that people talk around around things like for example uh, the best way to develop resilience is through hardship okay that's brilliant in the military or in a sporting example but in day-to-day -day life is that something that you really should be looking at and I think what's interesting is when you look at the types of people, the genre or cohorts of people who are very, very resilient, there's a lot of those people who you wouldn't necessarily want to see yourself in. For example, narcissists are incredibly resilient. It's not necessarily something you want to put your hand up to be because they just go at it and it's their aim and it's their view and nothing else matters and they think everyone else is wrong. So ego often drives resilience. And therefore, resilience can lead to kind of um, limited um, empathy, for example, which, you know, is not something that you really want. And certainly, I don't think something that an organization should pride themselves on. So there's a couple of interesting stats um, that I found um, when researching this and the Harvard Business Review was kind of the main, the main thing. And they talk about overused strengths can become weaknesses, which is interesting. I mean, how many times has anyone who's been at an interview or dare I say even interviewed and you get a question like, what are your weaknesses? And everyone always says, because I care too much. You know, first of all, don't ever say that if you haven't. But, you know, mainly I just think to myself, it's actually almost creates this thing that called false hope syndrome, which is you are so driven about what you want to do that you don't see anyone else along the way and you go absolutely all out to achieve what you want. The other thing is, is that resilience can often make people overly tolerant of adversity. So in the US at the moment, there's some stats I've seen that 75% of employees consider their direct line manager to be the worst part of their job. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big old number. And 65% would take a pay cut to replace their boss with someone better. What is interesting is, and this com is compared with the kind of technology world. So in the online dating world now, if you have a poor partner or things are going badly, you will go and you will go and find yourself a new partner. What's interesting in this job market is despite people saying they're incredibly unhappy and they don't like their line manager, et cetera, et cetera, um, most people seem to just accept this as their fate. So they don't actually do anything about it. And this is particularly the case at the moment in the pandemic, because people are obviously very, very scared about losing their job. But clearly being very unhappy and complaining about something and not wanting that to continue, but allowing it to continue is really, really poor for mental health, your motivation in general and stress related issues. And it effectively adds up to almost a hopelessness kind of um, situation, which I think is really, really sad. Um, now, resilience seems to be something that is really sought after in leaders. OK, and I get that. I do get that. But a leader's job is to lead, is not to dictate. So I think there's an interesting conundrum here. Um, so, you know, the fact is being very resilient and being very, very hard nosed around things can simply inhibit one's ability for to be self-aware, you know, which can lead to issues insofar as I'm driving for what I want and I don't really care about anyone else. And anyone who doesn't want to come along that journey is going to get pushed out the back. You've got to remember as a leader, you are leading people, not yourself. And I think that's a really, really important area. There's a difference between a leader and a dictator. And I think empathy and humanness are actually more important characteristics than necessarily just being super resilient. So there are a variety of things um, or issues with people in terms of um, mental health and general well-being, which um, can be negatively affected by someone's resilience. So they are things such as your self-esteem, imposter syndrome, trauma and abuse. And I think it's really interesting when you start to look at those things. Um, I know some people through my work who have been in really, really quite horrendous, abusive relationships. Now, they've allowed those to go on for a long, long time. Now, when you actually talk to some of the people, family and friends who were kind of indirectly involved in that, 
they almost praise them. They almost kind of say, well, you know, they've been really, really tough, really thick skinned. They've managed to get through that. It's amazing how they've managed to keep going, et cetera, et cetera. You could argue the resilience in that case is actually a negative thing. Shouldn't they be going, you know what? Stop. I am not accepting a life like this and a relationship like this. I'm moving on. So actually, you look at resilience sometimes and you go, you know what? I'm not actually convinced it's necessarily a brilliant thing all the time. So certainly when you're looking at leaders or potential leaders in the future, all of those above things can be exacerbated by super driven people. Yeah. And here's the irony. These are the very people who desperately want to surround themselves with tough, resilient people. However, <laughs> the way they act with this amazing sought after trait is actually precisely what can cause the opposite effect that they want, which actually all it does is it then adds fuel to this fire of no one is resilient enough anymore. What's wrong with everyone? All these snowflakes and all of this negative, negative connotations that you hear sometimes. So really, I think resilience to enable a happy and fulfilled life. Yes, that's brilliant. But resilience to drive your own agenda blindly whilst taking no prisoners with you, no, unless you happen to be going for Olympic gold, for example, in, in a Olympic gold 100 meter final. Absolutely. You're going to be focused on that, on that and that only. And that's absolutely fine. But I think in everyday life, I'm not convinced it's necessarily quite as great as people think. So I want you to just take one thing away from my talk, which is remember that human kindness and empathy always beats machine-like behavior every time. And my final thought is humans over robots. Thank you.